again, everyone. Welcome back. Fresh Bread is an attempt to share the same scripture together, just once a week, a short video, and then you can talk about it, pray about it, use it any way you want to. But a, a, a way of coming to the, the Word of God uh, as food, as manna, as, as a food right there on the ground in front of us, and uh, do it together in community as we find uh, more and more freedom to meet. Um, and the title I've, I've given for this one is He Gave Generously to the Poor. I hope you've noticed that I try on a regular basis to mention one of the great missions of the church, one of the great reasons why we are still here and not in heaven, is that we might give generously to the poor, to the lost, to the powerless, to the voiceless, to those that are socially disadvantaged, to those that are victims of unfairness. Um, it, it's, it's a vital mission of the church that we do that. Not just that we prosper and do well and get a flashy car, but that the world becomes we get it around us and the poor are loved and served and joined with by brothers and sisters who feel one in love with them. We're going to be reading in Acts 10 today, and I'll, I'll leave some of it to you. It's the story of Cornelius, so it's the first a Gentile convert, not that far away from, from where Peter and Paul started. They're, they're, they're reasonably close by, but very much uh, in a Roman community and, 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 and become uh, aware of the gospel and, and the glory of God as they seek God from sincere hearts. And it's about the story of a, a man called Cornelius. Uh, he was a centurion in charge of 100 soldiers. Uh, and he worshipped God and prayed regularly together with all his family, it says. He was a devout man of extraordinary character. Hey, be nice to people who aren't Christians yet. Be, be, be respectful to those who aren't saved yet. Uh, he is one, and he's known by God as a devout and a holy man, a sincere man going after God. And because of that, God's going to come find him. Um, it's a glorious story. Um, and so in those first four verses, um, it says... Uh, to uh, Cornelius, uh, it says, the angel replied, the angel had terrified him, by the way, angels sometimes do, angel, the angel replied, your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. So you, you give something to a poor neighbor, you give someone to someone on the street, uh, you show care and love for people who are isolated and cut off because of uh, mental illness, because of, of, of their giving up on, on, a, on a challenging life uh, for a whole lot of reasons, because of being rejected by families, maybe because of behavior, because of addiction, whatever, all kinds of reason why sadness comes into the world and why God loves to set people free and to reach them with the good news of Jesus, who's come to help us all. Um, but when giving to the poor, we have to remember that it's received by the poor, but by God too. You know, you give somebody a sandwich on the street and, and you just gave a sandwich to God. <laughs> if you do that for the least of his brethren, then you're doing it for him. It says the gifts of Cornelius to the poor and the prayers that he prayed have been received by God as an offering. Um, so offerings still happen. In case you've been reading your Old Testament and thinking the days of offerings are over. No, they're not. No, offerings are still received with joy and gladness by God who understands the purpose of the giver and the motivation of the giver. Verse 28 and you get Peter having sort of had visions and, and God's trying to set him free from the old way of thinking, from the old religion. Everyone else is telling him, no, we have to follow the, the laws of Moses. The vision God sent said quite the opposite. No, I'm going to change that now. It's going to be different now. I want you to pay attention, not just to Moses, but to me, says the Lord. No point in obeying Moses and never listening to God, who is alive and in today. And so he gives Peter the, the greatest chance to do this. And it says... You know, this is Peter speaking to Cornelius. This is how Peter says hello to people. It says, you know, it is against our laws for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home like this or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. And hello to you too, says Cornelius. What an awful greeting this is. You know, Peter still pouring out his prejudice still acknowledging that God spoke to him in a vision, but is still quoting his old way of looking at things. Why is that? Why do we always look back? Whatever you were, in religious terms or in secular terms or in whatever, whatever you used to be, we should not talk about it too much. Give you testimony when asked, but otherwise, let's just move on into the new revelation that God has given us. We're not meant to rehearse the old one and then try to live the new. We're meant to forget the old way of doing things and to live entirely in the new things that God has shown us. Peter should have done that, and it was a struggle for him, but a terrible way to greet somebody on their doorstep. Um, revolution and, and, and change in our mindset needs to result in a new way of thinking. 
and not a mixed way of thinking between the two things. Peter, this is verse 34, says, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. That's because the Holy Spirit has fallen on Cornelius and all his friends. He got as many in the house as he possibly could, below the regulations, he got them all in there and, and, and everyone heard the gospel. And he says, I see very clearly, Peter says, as the Spirit falls, that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. Think that about the nations. In every nation, in every family, in every place, in every life, God accepts all of those who fear him and do what is right. Um, this is the message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all, says Peter. So for men, for women, for rich or poor, for people who look like me and people who don't look remotely like me, for everyone and especially for the poor, God has no favorites. Good to see you. See you next week on Fresh Bread.